Hi everybody, in this video we're going to learn about something known as the array and it's one of the built-in data types you have for working with values and like many of the built-in data types you have. This one is seems pretty easy and fun on the surface but as you start diving into it you'll find out it has a whole lot of complexity for a lot of complex things but don't worry, in this video we're going to look at the very basic things you need to know in order to be productive using arrays and then we'll cover some of the more nitty-gritty details and some of the less uh, interesting things in future videos as, as appropriate. So let's get started. So at a very high level, if you had asked me what an array is, an array is a, it's just something that allows you to store a collection of data. You know, we looked at variables, we looked at things, we could store one item, one number, one piece of text. But with arrays, you can actually store many pieces of text. So let's imagine this. We have a grocery list. I have five items here. Milk, eggs, frosted flakes, the greatest cereal in the world. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise salami and juice. And what we want to do is have an easy way of representing this in JavaScript. And the way we're going to represent it is by, you guessed it, using an array. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to learn how to create an array. We learn how to access items in it. Seems kind of important. And then we'll wrap things up by learning how to add and remove. Now, this is just a small subset of what arrays are capable of in JavaScript. But like I mentioned at the very beginning, we're just going to cover the basics right now and then deal with the more advanced topics later because these three things will get you very far in both understanding JavaScript as well as writing your own code that does interesting things. The way you create an array is pretty simple. You create it like you would any other, you know, declaring any other variable. So here I have a variable called groceries and I'm initializing it to our array by creating what looks like a box, but it's actually an open bracket and close bracket. It's kind of hard to see with the space here, but you can see that it's, a, it's basically an open bracket and a close bracket. And by doing this, we're telling JavaScript that our groceries variable is storing what is um, currently an empty array. Now, an array isn't always empty. You can add things to it. And one of the ways you can add things to it is by, as you're creating the array, just populating it with values. In this case, I am reinitializing my groceries well, declaring and initializing my groceries variable with an array who already has some things predefined in it. And as you can see, these are the items from our earlier grocery list, milk, eggs, frosted flakes, salami, and juice. And notice how I'm storing these values. You know, in this case, they're tech, which is why they're in quotation marks. And the interesting thing to note is that each individual item needs to be separated with a comma. So in this case, each of these items is not just one giant string or one sentence. It's actually individual items because each of them are separated by a comma. And that's kind of important because that's really what sets arrays apart from other data structures we've seen so far in that you can actually store many items and access them as well. And the way you access them, here's where arrays are really, really powerful. Each item you store in the array has a number associated with it, a sequential number, and it starts with zero. So in this case, we have five items and the first item is associated with a zero, second item is associated with one, and, and so on. And there's a name for how these items are associated. And that name is index value or index number. And it always starts with zero. So if you have five items, your index values will go from zero to four to map to each of the items there. And the reason this is important is you'll be using the index values a lot to access values in the array. So in this case, we have our groceries array. And to access the first item, I just type in groceries. And then in the brackets, I specify the index number of the item I want. So for the first item, I can just pass in a zero and the value that gets returned or the value that gets stored is the first item in the array, which is milk. Or in this case, the second example, I'm typing in groceries and I'm passing an index value of three and what gets stored is salami, which happens to be the fourth item, zero, one, two, three, in the, in the list of items we have in our array. But the thing is, writing accessing values in that format is something you'll do you know, very rarely because for the most part, you'll never know how many items you have in your array or what the contents of the array even are beforehand. So the more common way you'll see you know, us accessing arrays is by using a for loop. And the thing to pay attention to is our starting condition, our ending or terminating condition, and how we actually access the values within the for loop using those two things. So here's our groceries array yet again. And in this for loop, we're starting with the count of zero. That's something you've probably seen before. And we're terminating it not by a fixed number or fixed value, but by actually accessing the length property that all arrays have. So in this case, I'm checking if our value of i or counter is less than the length property on groceries, which is a count of the number of items inside the array. In this case, groceries at length is going to be five to map the five items our array has. And then the way we access these items is inside the for loop, notice we have the item variable. And the item variable, it should initialize to groceries 
it were a bracket and you specify the index number and the index number specifying is not a hard coded value but it's actually i so you can imagine for the first running of this loop you're going to have grocery zero which means that milk will be what gets printed to the console via the console.log statement and this loop goes from zero all the way to four which is when the terminating condition ends up hitting and then your loop exits so this is a very easy way and a very predictable way of being able to go through all the items without having to worry about knowing beforehand how many items your array has or whether things in the array are, are in the right place. So keep this piece of code in mind. You'll see it all the time. So you know, be friends with it. And now we're going to start you know, getting towards the end of this. You know, we're going to look at the last two things, which are adding and removing items in the array. The way you add items to the array is by using the push method. So in this case, I'm doing grocery that push, and the push method takes one or several arguments to correspond to what you want to add to the end of your array. I just have, you know, for simplicity, I just have one item we're adding, and it is cookies. So when you do grocery that push that cookies, the cookies item gets added to the end of our array, and notice that it now has an index position value of five. And to remove an item from the array, it's pretty simple. You have the pop method, and the pop method is simply takes the last item from the array and takes it out. So your array is now back to just whatever you, is at least one item less than what you started with. So there you have it, a lightning fast overview of the things arrays do and the methods you have for being able to create them, access them, and also add and remove values from them. So if you want to learn more, go to crypto.com. There's a lot more on arrays and other things there. If you need any help, post in the forums at forum.crypto.com where I and others who love arrays a whole lot will be happy to help answer your questions. And you can find me all over the web as well. You can find me on Twitter at Krupa, Facebook and YouTube. You know, just hit me up on any of those places and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you really like this video, you know, tell your friends and enemies to watch it and, and subscribe as well. I love it when people subscribe to my videos because it is what makes it possible for me to continue creating videos. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Subscribing is entirely optional, but it's cool and it allows me to brag with other people who also make videos. So that's a good reason, or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, if you enjoy reading technical topics as opposed to just watching videos on them, there's a book that I wrote recently called JavaScript, Absolute Beginner's Guide, where I talk about arrays and a whole lot of other cool JavaScript topics in much more detail, and it's available in Kindle and paperback editions. So totally check it out as well while you're here. And with that, guys, I will see you all next time.